Welcome back all, this is Daz from Modoro Technique. So up this week we're looking at the Digikai's DR4088 LocoNet Opto module. Bit of a mouthful. So basically what they do, uh, so we can feed back real world inputs back into the system and it'll get uh, taken up by your computer program of choice, uh, i.e. train controller, iTrain, to name a few. So what I mean by inputs are, we I'm currently using on my Fallen Log Railway the infrared side of things and I'll show you how that is done. So basically what the infrared will show is any given length of track, you can pinpoint exactly where a train is at any given time. So where that comes in handy for what I'm using it for is pinpoint accuracy when I'm doing what I call the KD dance, when I'm parking my trains over the top of a electromagnetic to do uncoupling moves. Um, also, you can use it for physical push buttons. Fascia, what I'm planning on using this for is for emergency stop activations and you can do toggle switches so I'll show you what I'm using that for for some lighting functions on my layout. So, Enough of the waffle, let's get into it. So let's get cracking. So this is a very, very quick schematic of schematic of the DR4088 Loco Net Opto Isolated Detection Unit. So the ones we're going to have a look at today are we're going to look at the we're going to look at the, the push button. We're going to look at the, the toggle switch. And also the, this has got the, the light barrier or hall sensor, but I'm actually going to use a, an infrared. And what I'm using is an as a tracks uh, little module, and I will put a link in that in the description below what I actually use. But the the connections are very similar. Now I won't lament too much on the physical connections because it's pretty well self-explanatory on this diagram. So if you've got a an AC or DC, you can use DCC as well. You got sort of a common so we'll say if we're using DC sort of a negative into the the common section of the module here and then you've got the say the positive running out and through so that switch there would be a normally open switch and I'll get to all that very shortly and very similar to what we do here with the the toggle switch and also the hall sensor sorry the, the infrared so the the infrared's nothing but a switch that's just switched either on and off if the beam of infrared is broken. So let's get into the infrared side of things, but only after we do a, have a quick message from my sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay are getting into the Christmas spirit this holiday. Come over to their answer questions and get a coupon. $5 off for any $30 purchase, right the way through to $200 off for any $2,999 purchase. Some of their other Christmas deals are free prototyping for PCBs for Christmas type designs, up to 50% off for 3D printing and CNC machining. And don't forget to come across to the special sales in the PCBWay store. All you need to do is log in to www pcbway.com okay so what we've got here we've got the the infrared set up here with the receiver and the uh, transmitter there so obviously that then gets connected into the dr4088 LocoNet opto module and then then we've got the the LocoNet cable that will then go out to the dr5000 or your dcc command station so i'll bring it in set up on the video so this is into contrain controller so you can see the on train controller there just near where I've sort of zoomed right in there is a little yellow dot. So that's a, what they call a contact indicator, which is where you, you put the address of the Optio module here. So you look at what happens when I roll that through and it breaks the beam. So you can see how that, that little light then goes on and off. What I believe what you could use that for is on a layout where it's got some sort of hidden siding or something where it's got to indicate where a train is for the operator or the engineer to then stop the train um, if the train is out of view. Also, another place that I've seen them be used is if you want um, on a rather large helix, so you've got multiple levels to it and you sort of want to find out on a sort of a, an external pa uh, panel how you want to see where a train is at any given time. So you can see that obviously when you do normal occupancy detection, you can only detect the length of track. So if that isolated block is say two meters or six feet long, you only know within that six feet or two meters where the actual train is. But this gives you a pinpoint accuracy. 
So I will show some a video very shortly of um, how I used it for pinpoint accuracy when I use it on my fallen log railway to do what we call the KD shuffle. So it'll stop the train over an electromagnet uncoupling ramp. All right, so the next input we're gonna look at is just a very simple toggle switch. But what this allows us to do is to say, have a toggle switch on uh, the fascia of the model railway and put inputs from that toggle switch in via the 4888 module and then back into your software like train controller, iTrain, etc. So we'll just quickly duck over to my train controller at this point in time and I'll zoom on in to this here. So what you're looking at here is some basic switches. Now, the one we're gonna have a look at is that top one, which is BS building lights. So what that actually is, is a switch, which is the off in the off position at this point in time, which is connected up to a DCC stationary decoder. And I will put the link below to that. I made an Arduino stationary decoder, and that is on address, DCC address number one. So what we can do is, on the fascia, we can actually input into via the switch. So I'll just switch that switch to its on position, and you can see how that toggles that button on and off, that soft button on the on the on train controller. So what that would allow, so what that's, that is actually operating is my my building lights. So all the lights within my buildings are on my barroom station. All right, so what we're going to look at now is two last use cases using push buttons. So the push buttons I got here is a normally closed push button and a normally open push button. And you'll see how they function very differently just by purely being open or closed. So what I mean by closed is the when you push the button, it opens the circuit up. When it's an open push button, when you push the button, it closes the circuit like a switching, it's like switching on a normal toggle switch. Okay, so the first one we're gonna look at is you'll see where that little halo is around the button. So this is gonna be the normally closed, sorry, normally open button. Once we push this little red button here, you can see how that lights up. So what that's gonna do on my layout is it's gonna invoke a, an emergency stop process. So I won't go into what that actually does within train controller because it not, might not be relevant to your, your situation, but however, it stops the trains at a nice gradual stop. So with the other button on the other side, which is the normally closed button, is how we deactivate it. So that's just a very basic way. I'll probably sophisticate this a little bit more. I'll probably try to have one button that will do both, but that might... Revol uh, might need um, some relays or something similar. I haven't given that a lot of thought. So we'll just go back over to what the second button is going to look like. So you can see there the differences between the two. So, so the, one, see the one on the right hand side with the halo around it is constantly yellow. So when I push the the button here, the little red one, you'll see how it's, uh, it turns itself off. So I know that is the button that it's normally closed. So when I'm pushing the button, it breaks the circuit. That's the end of this video, so thanks for watching. Please comment below if, if the DR4088 Loconet Opto Isolated Detection Unit is something that you would use. So it's a versatile little piece of kit that I've probably bought a half a dozen of these now and will implement on my layout in due course for various little functions. Uh, what I probably like the most about it is you can actually get, you can get real world buttons, albeit toggle switches or push buttons to interact with your program of choice like mine's obviously train controller make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad techniques